everybody, Mike Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. Uh, today I'm going to do a little how-to video on dry brushing. Uh, I know that a lot of you have heard the term or, or whatever and maybe some of you use it but uh, I'm assuming that there's probably a lot of guys out there who haven't used it and haven't seen what kind of results that it yields when you do do it. So um, anyway, let's see how we do it. Okay everybody, um, I did a video recently of using some um, Tamiya or Tamaya um, panel line highlighter and uh, you can see how, I, how the radiator fans here turned out. If you haven't watched that video you can look for it on the how-to page. Uh, but anyway you can see that we've um, kind of darkened up things that we want darkened up but what happens when we want to lighten up the things that we need to lighten up or feel like we should lighten up? This is obviously an old shell and I'm going to go over that again. I'm going to tell you that again if you've already seen the other video. But what we're going to do is we're just going to go in there and do some real subtle highlights with what we call dry brushing. And dry brushing is basically a technique of putting, uh, I prefer acrylic paint. You can put any kind of paint you want to do dry brushing with, but I prefer acrylic. And uh, you, what you do is put it on the brush and then wipe the brush off until there's hardly anything, if anything, coming off the brush. At that point what we're going to do is you're going to take a, what's, what it's good to do is have a sample piece of plastic or something around. Um, I don't really have something. Hang on just a second. A piece of plastic or something uh, to dry brush on. I just happen to have this junky wood dowel here. But you could, you could run it on the, on the, um, whatever your test piece is and see how much acrylic you're getting off. You want to just barely have anything coming off uh, when you're doing this. In fact, uh, let's, let's try this. On this light colored, silver colored locomotive, I prefer to use probably white. And on a lot of buildings I like to use white and use it very sparingly. On darker shells, uh, such as this Pensy shell, which we're going to do, maybe a darker gray color or something because you don't want it to quite uh, overwhelm the dark color. So I adjust, the, I adjust the colors based on the color of whatever it is that I'm doing if I'm doing a locomotive or a car. When I do buildings I generally use the gray color or a light gray color. Uh, only in certain circumstances do I really use uh, white just, so, just because it's so stark but on light colors it works well. So let's try it on this Santa Fe shell. Okay, what we're going to do is squirt some out on this, squirt some white out on my uh, very extravagant um, color palette here. And um, I load the brush up basically and uh, let me scoot this over and then on the paper, on the paper towel which is kind of hard to see since I have a white paper towel, but anyway um, I wipe off, I just keep wiping until you feel like that you've got most of it off. Something like this. And we're going to use my test piece here. And I don't know if it comes up on the camera very well, but you can see that there's just a hint of white coming off and that's what we want. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go over the top of the locomotive and it's really looking like that there's not much happening. But you don't want to go crazy with this stuff. It's better to do it a couple of times and then go back and do some more if you need to versus trying to do a whole bunch of it at one time. Now, even though the locomotive is silver, um, you can see that the, the uh, white has just stuck on the tops of everything which is basically recreating uh, artificial sunlight. I mean when we're in our train room that's all we have is artificial sunlight. I can do the same thing back here too by the way on the uh, grab irons and you can see that it kinda makes the grab irons stand out. So that's just that's just doing it on a light colored uh, for instance locomotive. Um, I can do it on the even on the red part up here on the uh, grab irons, the molded in grab irons, and you can see it brings them right out. And we could use our black uh, around, have used 
the black around those. I didn't, but we could have. Um, I could even do these side grills. Um, and it doesn't look like anything's coming off. You know, it's hard for me to keep reiterating that it hardly looks like there's anything coming off of the uh, brush. But if I hold this up real close, uh, right in here, you can see that that white is coming off and creating our artificial sunlight. And uh, let's try a, a small building. Okay, here's a small shed. It's a Model Tech Studios uh, cast uh, little shed. And while it is weathered and painted and looks pretty good, we're going to bring out some of the highlights on it by dry brushing. And because it's a dark building, I'm going to go with my darker gray. Well, let me see here if I can get it out of the bottle. Now you can see that it's considerably darker than the white. And if you needed to, you could actually mix colors together. And I didn't clean this brush, by the way. I'm just using it again. You, you should clean them. Uh, otherwise, they get stiff with the, uh, obviously, with the uh, paint. But uh, let me get my test piece. Not a very good test piece for you guys to see on, but I can see that that gray is coming off. And what I'm going to do on this building is just run real lightly. You don't want, you just want to drag it across these these uh, seam lines on the tar paper roof. And you can see right away how it brings out the edges of the tar paper on the roof. There's the the dry brush side. There's the non-dry brush side. Let's do this one. Let me see if I can hold it a little bit closer so you can see what's happening. And keep in mind, like I said, this is a gray color because this is kind of a dark building. But you can see how it brings out all the texture in what would have been the tar paper on the roof versus the way it looked before. Let's try the garage door. garage door in the eaves. You can see how it brings the garage door right out. This window is so light that it's not going to do much there, but I would recommend uh, whatever color you're using. I'm going to put a little bit more on here. Whatever color you are using, when you get to a point like this, is just put a little more paint on the uh, brush and just lightly go over everything on the building. And while it just I keep saying it over and over, but while it looks like it's not doing anything, it's really highlighting just the top edges of everything. Now we're at the entrance door. Let's give it a shot here. Let me see if I can get this pretty close. You can see how it just brings out and accents the door. So there, it just took us a couple of seconds, and we've done the highlighting on this building. And I don't know how it shows up on the camera, but it looks much better uh, than it did just sitting there. Now we're going to uh, try a, a car. Okay, um, here's a nickel plate uh, car that was weathered by Joseph Hudson, our, uh, our weathering guy. And um, it's a really nice weathering job, but we're going we're gonna to enhance uh, the look of it just a little bit. And on a car like this, you don't really want to go crazy because you've already got a real nice looking weather job on here. So you're going to be even more careful about doing it extremely lightly. And because it's a dark car, once again, a darker car, even though it's green, we're going to use the gray instead of the white so stark. If, it, if you do a, a, a car, a locomotive, a building or something, and it just looks like it's not enough, then you can go to a lighter color. We're going to start on the truck here. I hope you can see it. You can see right away how it brings out the detail in the truck. That, let me get, move my hand a little bit. I'm trying to work around the camera here once again. 
you can see how it brings out the truck detail. Let's do the other trucks. Now, that's, I mean, obviously you can see it's very light. I've wiped like 90, 95% of the paint off the brush. Now we're just going to swipe down the car here and get the grab irons and the tops, top edges of the door ribs. Oops, I'm sorry, got you out of the camera. And the top edge of the car, just ever so slightly. Top edges of the, the, uh, the letters. And I hope you can see how it just drags out some of the high spots. Let's go ahead and do the end. And you can see how it brings out the grab iron there. I'm going to put a little more on the brush. And you can see on the white paper towel how how much is coming off. Okay, once again, I'm just going to work from the top and just go down. And you can already see on this car how it's highlighted the rivet heads along that line right there. Just again, again, just bringing out the details. Now we're going to do the break end. This will be the, probably the most amazing transformation, so keep an eye on this, okay? Now you can see all kinds of stuff that you really didn't notice before. And we're going to go back and give this one ladder just a little shot. Now for the roof. The roof always takes the uh, most significant weather, uh, obviously, of, of any car or anything, automobile, house, anything, when it's outside. So we're going to kind of do it the heaviest up here, but we're going to start lightly again, okay? And we're going to go from end to end because the ribs are raised, okay? And you can now see the tops of those ribs and the grab irons in the corners starting to stand out. Now, the roof walk, we're going to go the other way. Because we want to catch the edges of the roof walk and make them stand out. Now we're going to go longitudinal with it to get pick up grain in the wood. Now, I hope you can see that on the camera. But you have now highlighted the very tops of the ribs and anything that sticks up on the entire model. And while it's done this, I've done this transformation while you've been watching, I'm sure it's hard to perceive how it looked uh, before we did the dry brushing. But uh, when you're here in person looking at it, it's extremely evident. Looks like I have a broken step, several broken steps. But nevertheless, uh, that's it. Now we're going to do a dark locomotive shell. Okay, here's my Pennsylvania shell, uh, junk shell, that I uh, used the Tamiya or Tamiya um, wash on the, on the top of the locomotive. Now we're going to bring back some of that highlight. But on, the, on a dark locomotive or building or whatever, once again, we got to be very careful and we're going to use our gray. In fact, I probably should change to even a darker gray, but uh, for the purpose of time, we're not going to. But I want you to watch what happens here. Because you can really see it on, the, on a, on a uh, dark shell. It just starts to pick up all the tops of everything.
and brings it out. Got kind of funky horns on this thing. But you can even see, if I, as I go down the locomotive just real lightly, you can even see it bringing out the rivet heads. And while it looks pretty stark, or bright, I guess not stark is not the word, but bright in, in uh, real close up, when you look at the locomotive from far away, you get that artificial light uh, coming off of those rivets and it really makes them stand out. Okay, I know this is getting kind of boring, uh, but um, I just want to show you using white on a light car. This is another car I did with the wash the other day in the, uh, in the other video review of the uh, panel line, uh, to me a panel line uh, paint. So we're going to go with white, but we, and I had cleaned my brush by the way. So it's got a little water on it, so I got to get the water out of it first. Really get the water out of it good. Then we're going to put some white paint back on there and we're going to try this again. It's hard to tell how much paint you have off uh, with the white. You can see that I painted my finger. And it, and it even brings out your uh, fingerprint. But anyway, so we're going to start on the top of this car because that's where we want the most highlighting. And just because the white is hard to control, we're going to do real lightly. And I can see that we have just about the right consistency of paint on the uh, brush. And you can see that the uh, tread on the walkway is starting to come back. And then we're going to highlight the latches. And on these light cars, it, does, it doesn't show up extremely well. But when you compare it... Uh, to not having it or you're sitting here watching it being done there's a dramatic uh, change let's do this brake wheel that I was so fond of when I did the black on it and it brought out the bolt heads on the uh, brake wheel and let's see what happens and the brake rigging I need to get a little more paint on there Like I said, if it's not putting enough paint on there for your satisfaction, just go back and put some more paint on there. Oops, I'm out of the camera. Now you can see that the, the white color is really close, actually, to the gray color that we're painting on. But I think you can see there how it's accented everything that I've brushed over. It's pretty hard to notice on the camera, like I say, but you can see it in real life here. I'm going to go this way across the car for the ribs. And I think you can see that the ribs are now standing out a lot more than they were. There's the painted. There's the unpainted. We're going to do this one. And I'm not going to put any more on there. I was thinking about putting some more paint on. But I think we've got enough. On these light cars, it doesn't take much to make stuff stand out. A lot less than on the uh, darker items. But that's pretty much it. Um, and I kind of hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope it was kind of explanatory on what dry brushing is. You can dry brush on just anything. You can do buildings. You can do people. Um, anything. I mean, literally anything. All you're creating is an, is an artificial uh, sunlight reflecting off of different uh, high spot surfaces. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, I, I hope you get something out of it. And give it a try on, uh, on an old shell. I mean, most of this stuff here, with the exception of that car, is old stuff. And, and see if you like the technique. Okay, so... Here's a little little clip I took of these models before the, the uh, dry brushing. And hopefully we can get an idea of what they look like after. Okay, and here's the after shot. I hope this shows up in the video. Um, 
It doesn't show up immediately to me on the, on the uh, screen of the camera here, but I, I believe that in the video you'll be able to see the difference. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video today on dry brushing. And as usual, thanks for watching.